Yeah. No. I have a short statement to make. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the media, good afternoon. When Ghana succeeded in securing a non-permanent seat on the United Nations Security Council for the years 2022-2023, we indicated that we will help ensure that Africa's voice is heard loud and clear in the deliberations of the Security Council, both on matters affecting the continent and on global issues. Our presidency of the Council for this month is doing just that, with a focus on countering terrorism and its effects on Africa. We have learned, most often through bitter experiences, that terrorism and violent extremism are not restricted to particular geographic locations or jurisdictions. As the impact of a, sec a single terrorist incident in one part of the world resonates throughout the world. West Africa, particularly the Sahel, in recent times has become a hotbed of terrorist and extremist activities. Widespread poverty and disillusionment amongst youth in the region are not only providing fertile breeding grounds for those who want to cross the Sahara Desert on foot and the Mediterranean Sea in rickety boats in the hope of finding a better future in Europe but also for a new generation of terrorists. I've come here today to stress on the fact that the shared nature of threats emanating from terrorist and extremist groups in West Africa, in light of the happenings in the world at the moment, demands the enhanced collaboration of all security actors within the region and of the Security Council. I call on the Council to be preemptive rather than reactive in helping to address the underlying causes of instability on the continent and in the Sahel, and thereby help meet the aspirations of our youthful populations who can help our continent to become great and strong. And so say, I believe current global circumstances demonstrate the urgent need to put back on the global agenda the demand for the reform of the United Nations especially of the composition and structure and working methods of the Security Council on the basis of the African Common Position on UN reform as enunciated in the Ezzouini Consensus. I'm hoping for fruitful discussions, conversations and deliberations on this all-important subject during Ghana's presidency. And I'm encouraged by today's deliberations in the Council on the theme Counterterrorism in Africa. I thank you for your attention. Mr. President, a few questions. Um, Pamela Falk from CBS News. Twitter has announced the closing of the only Africa office, which was about 20 people in Ghana. Do you have any comment on that? Yeah, the only Africa office of? Of Twitter. Of Twitter. Well, I think it's unfortunate. We look forward to its presence. and beginning, it was not too uh, long ago that it was up, but, but I, I understand that it's part and parcel of a, a global restructuring of the company that is taking place under the new owner. I think it's very unfortunate that that should, should take place. Uh, the more uh, the organizations like that have local outlets, I think the better for all of us. So I think it's unfortunate. But there it is. I don't own the company. Mr. Thank President, you. James Bayes from Al Jazeera. If I can ask you about the situation in Ethiopia, it's now over a week since that peace deal, which obviously was good news, but no humanitarian aid at all has got into Tigray. Are you concerned? Well, we must all be concerned. The Tigrayans are human beings like the rest of us, so we're all concerned. But we are, all, we are encouraged by the fact that the leaders... General Obasanjo, together with the President Uhuru Kenyatta, were able to find uh, means of bringing the two sides together, together with uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa, to get the peace uh, and the ceasefire. That already is a, uh, important steps. It's unfortunate that so far the humanitarian assistance has not found the destination that it should. But we continue to work on it, and we will continue to, to push forward. 
Mr. President, on, on your, on your, excuse me, the President said he's going to answer my question. Yeah, go ahead, please. Go Thank ahead. you. Um, in the Security Council today, um, members and yourself were looking for new ideas to fight terrorism especially in West Africa, and for funding. Um, you've just had some private meetings with the UAE and the United States. Um, have you gotten any commitments, and did you hear any new ideas on fighting terrorism? What, what, what I was concerned about today, and continue to be concerned about, is establishing the grounds for better and better coordination of the efforts that all of us are making. That's the key, because funding and all of that, the coordination and the organizational principles on which the funding are going to be, is going to be used are not there. The funding in itself will not change very much. I think that the most important thing that I've got out of this meeting is a, a strong consensus that there is a need to enhance the coordination of the counter-terrorist efforts in, in West Africa and in the Sahel better than it has happened in the past. And that's what we're looking forward to. So I want to thank you all very much. Security Council report. Uh, you mentioned about the fact that Africa has been uh, sidelined or shut out. Uh, how are you going to push the Security Council reforms and what do you well, think can be it's done? Been, it's been on the table. The African position has been on the table before the Security Council for a very long time. I know, I, are you from India? Yeah, I mean, India, too, has, for instance, also made proposals in the area. There are several proposals on the table. But what is important is to get the uh, General Assembly as well as the Security Council engaged for some, some kind of mechanism where we can bring all these ideas to the table and see how best we can go forward. When the Security Council was being set up in 1945, we were all colonies in Africa. 54 states, I think only Ethiopia and Liberia of the continent were, were, were present in, in, in San Francisco. But the vast uh, majority of us were not present, like you, India, you were not present there too in San Francisco. And an organization that was made in those circumstances cannot clearly be reflective of the realities of today. And what we have, we've been clamoring for for several, several, several years at least the last two decades that I've been personally involved, is to create an organization and a structure of the Security Council that is truly reflective of our times, not of the 1945 world in which it was created. But for that to happen, a lot of discussion, a lot of negotiation has to take place, and we have to continue to insist on the need for these negotiations and for for the discussions to take place. Because it's only through that that hopefully at the end we will get uh, a reform that will, give the, uh, will, will reflect the contemporary realities that we're dealing with. And by that also enhance and strengthen and empower the Security Council and the United Nations because it will be operating as a body that is much more in tune with today's realities than the body that we have seen so far. Thank you. Thank you for taking our questions.